from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2017. Now your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back with Silicon Angle Media's presentation of the Cube. We're the worldwide leader in enterprise tech coverage. Happy to welcome back to the program Steve Powell, who's the CMO of Ignea Systems. Uh, Steve, you flew out from Seattle here to welcome to the home of the New England Patriots. Oh my gosh! Uh, so uh, <laughs> number no. twelve, number twelve. Yeah, you know the twelfth man representing here. Uh, That's right. You, you've got. I, I, I have to say, I almost canceled my season tickets when Pete Carroll was our, was our coach. So luckily, he's worked out better for you than he did for us. Um, my wife's a Browns fan. She says the same thing about Bill Belichick. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's the, uh, the the coaching fraternity is kind of like the tech world. Um, it's a small group. That's we all right. kind of get to know each other and move around. So uh, you know, th thanks for joining us. Steve. Yes. Well, thanks for having me. All right. So, so Steve, you know, we, we've been talking to you guys since you were, you were coming out of stealth. Well, why don't you give our audience kind of you know what, what, what's the up, uh, the uh, the update on Igneous? Okay. Well, for those of you who don't uh, know us, uh, what Igneous really uh, does is we offer uh, an on-site uh, private cloud storage service. And uh, that's our first offering. It's part of our greater mission of providing a true cloud for local data. And uh, what we basically offer today is a, uh, an unstructured data store that's completely delivered as a service. We take our own equipment, we, uh, uh, we install it, we monitor it, we manage it, we even refresh it when necessary. And all the customer has to do is uh, uh, you know, really subscribe, and that's it. It's all pay as you go, and it's all zero touch for the customer. Uh, you know, uh, we launched back in October, as uh, as you recall, and you know, one of the things that I think that it's been been really great since launching is that we've uh, really started to see uh, uh, how uh, customers that didn't know us uh, are actually really evaluating. Uh, really, I think the the convergence of two trends. You know, one is there's this data growth. Uh, you know, trend that goes on, and, and pretty much everybody we talk to is citing uh, data growth rates. You know, you know, on the order of you know doubling. You know, every three years, where IT budgets are growing less than five percent a year. So there's this mismatch where basically everybody's hitting this juncture that what they used to do can't work because the data is growing faster than the budget. Um, and at the same time, there's this data growth that's actually happening, and the data growth is uh, not from you know, relational databases and structured data, but, uh, but rather uh, a lot of new applications that are, uh, are logging sensor data, that are supporting uh, machine learning, uh, uh, AI. Uh, really, it's machine-generated data being analyzed by machines with humans uh, really just training you know, the, the AI and the machine learning. Yes, yeah, so Steve, I, I want to unpack that a little yeah. bit. Let, let, let's talk, uh, because, you know, we, many of us that, that watch storage has been like, well, the storage industry, it needs to change. It's not about selling boxes. It's not about capacity. And even on, on unstructured data, it was kind of like, okay, well, what's creating data and what's actually valuable? How much is it just, do I stick it on a cheap tier? You know, what do I actually do with it? What's interesting you guys do, some of, some of those use cases. You know, you throw out, the, throw out you know, machine learning, machine data, uh, things like sensors. Uh, every time I hear that word, you know, that IOT buzzword uh, kind of pops into your head. But, you know, maybe you could talk to some of those, you know, what's bringing customers, what, you know, what's that, that driving challenge that they have uh, that, that you're helping solve that, that's different from the way storage has been done for many years? Yeah, I think the, uh, that's a, that's a great question, and I think that uh, that there's just been a real transition, and I think the transition has been largely uh, created by the kinds of data that that we want that we want to manage and that we want to curate. And as we're seeing these sort of large unstructured data sets, I mean, it starts with the data. So, uh, you know, so as an example, uh, you take. Uh, equipment that used to exist in the past, like let's say in scientific computing. You used to have fl flow cytometers, which were just time series data. And then what's now happened is that associated with every flow cytometer is now a real-time video feed. When you look at the old world of microscopy, what you used to do is you used to flash freeze a sample and, and basically uh, take a picture of it. And now uh, what you can do with lattice light shield microscopy is you can actually uh, uh, look at cells uh, in vivo, you know, while they're alive. And you can, you know, I've personally uh, gotten to watch a, uh, 
uh, a T cell uh, move uh, through a, a collagen matrix. And that's all microscopy, but generating orders of magnitude more data. And as we're looking at these very, very different data sets, we're looking at very, very different kinds of computing. And what that requires is a very, very different kind of infrastructure. And so, you know, the, the infrastructure has had just had to get, you know, a lot more intelligent and the, the architecture has had to get a lot different. And what we've noticed is, is that, that a lot of the patterns that are actually built, being built in the public cloud as they've, they've taken kind of a fresh look at the computing models uh, have really be become appropriate for this new kind of computing and we don't see that on the premises. And that's really what we set out to go do. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, it, it, it's probably the wrong term, but it, it sounds like we're describing kind of like object storage 2.0. You know, 1.0, you know, I remember those healthcare use cases. Everybody, you know, when I was doing, uh, you know, radiology, when, when you're doing certain, you know, healthcare and sciences, um, I, I need metadata, I need to understand that, but now there's just orders of magnitude more data, uh, and you know, technologies are making, you know, it, it's denser, prices have come down, so um, the idea has been around for a little bit while, but it sounds like the technology's matured uh, to allow kind of an explosion. Well, and, and it's just a computing model. It's like one of these things where uh, uh, we're really, because of the emergence of microservices, uh, you know, one of the things that we've seen is, is applications want a, a restful interaction with the storage layer, and so, uh, so it turns out that, that that tends to be very, very perfect for a, uh, a cloud-like implementation where you can uh, actually implement you know, uh, you know, uh, high volume unstructured data really, really well via a RESTful API where in the old world of uh, sort of POSIX uh, semantics and, and that kind of transactional model, uh, you just lost scalability. You, know, you had a lot of proprietary uh, hardware. Uh, you know, with NVRAM, you had proprietary interconnects you know, with things like InfiniBand. You know, and nowadays, you know, being able to loosely cover Couple distributed systems is is really the the name of the game, and that's that's ultimately what we we aim to build at Igneous, and that's that's all the technology in terms of our our commercial offering. The customer doesn't care what's behind it, but fundamentally, what you're looking for is the scalability and resilience, you know, that that the cloud offers, but doing that on premises. Yeah. Uh, so, Steve, we had a really interesting crowd chat uh, about a month or so ago, talking about hybrid cloud, and the the, the term the thing I've been saying for the last but probably year is as customers try to figure out you know what goes where in the cloud environment you know I've got SaaS I've got public cloud I've, I've got uh, you know my, my, my private cloud it's you know follow the data and follow the applications um, in the cloud you know things like mobile and even some video streaming I think we understand how to do that but why does on-premises make sense uh, for you, your customers your workloads and your solution yeah absolutely and so you know, first a little bit on hybrid cloud. There are kind of two different definitions of hybrid cloud. One is kind of the AWS VMware scheme where uh, what you're really looking to do is run your old stuff uh, that you were running on-prem in the public cloud and you call that hybrid. But there's another way to look at it, which is to say, hey, let's let take, take a look at the computing patterns that are being run in the public cloud. Uh, how do I bring that down to the premises? And the reason that, that you might want to do that is, uh, is really twofold. One is the, the gravity of the data. So it might just be that the data sets are uh, too big to move back and forth you know, over very thin internet pipes. Uh, and so you want to actually uh, keep the data close to its source. The other is uh, you know, something that we've seen, which is really more of a preference, which is that, that while I think that cloud technologies are, are actually have a lot of capability for security, uh, there are a lot more hoops for folks to run through to ensure that they're compliant with their own internal policies. And where they've already set out uh, a set of policies for how they run the stuff behind the firewall, sometimes it's just simpler for them to actually keep all of the data on the premises and not actually have to worry uh, about some of the issues and, and tracking and compliance issues associated with how you move the data around. Yeah, one of the things we've heard from users is when they, they use public cloud, one of the things they really like is, you know, sometimes the CFO is not fully on board, but you know, buying things as a service. So they want to understand predictability, but they want to, you know, buy it as a service. Understand uh, how, how does your solution fit into that uh, yeah. kind of paradigm? That's great. I think it actually our solution fits into both trends really, really well because what we're really offering. We talked a little bit about technology, but really fundamentally, we're offering a service. And so when when Igneous, uh, you know, goes into a customer, our interaction is as a service. We uh, customers interact with uh, our service via APIs, and uh, and they get a, 
uh, a bill for a subscription. And so it's an as a service model. You don't buy hardware, you don't uh, install software, uh, you don't have systems to manage. Uh, at, the, uh, at the same time, there is a predictability that uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of the downside of the public cloud because there's a, there's a fee generally to access your data out of storage. And often when people don't actually understand their data access and their data movement patterns, the costs of running applications in the public cloud become quite unpredictable. And you actually don't run into that unpredictability with a solution like Igneous because uh, our data is on your local area network and we don't charge you to access the data that's on your own network. So, you know, if I come to an event like this, um, if I'm thinking about my storage today, the, the conversation in the marketplace has been, well, the, you know, the new choices out there is there's you know, the HCI, the hyperconverged infrastructure, and there, there's Flash, the AFA you know, devices out there. And of course, even the lines between those are blurring because I can have an all Flash configuration uh, of hyperconverged and uh, you know, some of the all Flash array things are getting converged and put into more things. Uh, how do you help customers, you know, as the, you know, what, what, what's the, the bullet point as to, well, you know, this is for this kind of application, this is for this solution, and hey, you know, there's this whole new category that, you know, you need to be thinking about. Yeah, I think that's, that's perfect, and I think the, uh, uh, the real trick here is, is that there's a difference between your, your hot tier and your flash tier and your capacity tier. And you know, fundamentally, the, the flash tier is really good when time to first byte is very important. So you know, that might be for your relational database applications and things of that sort where there tends to be a lot of, of, of searching through an index. And so you've got uh, a lot of, of, of low latency requirements. And then on the other hand, what you have is a, a capacity tier. They may be your, your video surveillance. They may be your large unstructured documents. They may be your sensor data. And uh, in those contexts, uh, you don't necessarily need the time to fir first byte. What you really need is uh, capacity throughput. Um, and so the overhead of setting up, for example, a RESTful connection uh, is not significant when compared to the amount of data that actually needs to go through the system. And that's actually where you know, RESTful semantics uh, uh, actually get superior to you know, POSIX semantics when you have you know, very, very large you know, unstructured data sets. Um, Hyperconverged is actually in a, a little bit of a different world, and I think that while Hyperconverged has worked out you know, pretty well, I think, for virtualization workloads, you know, we've really found that, that when it comes to these very, very large unstructured data sets, uh, you know, hyperconverged isn't necessarily always the way to go. You tend to find uh, uh, a utilization issue between your your compute and your storage layers, um, where where you have to you have to actually think about you know how you're how you're balancing all this stuff. And so you know, really the the world that we've really seen emerge as as uh, new applications come forward uh, is there's a really a trend to write microservices that are stateless and to have them talk to a, a stateful layer. That's why in the public cloud there's a pattern of having things like elastic container services you know, talking to an S3 and you know, we definitely see on premises that same type of thing that's going to emerge. You know, there's going to be some time to get there. You know, admittedly, you know, as I was uh, you know, mentioning kind of at the beginning, we've seen this really interesting uh, set of, of interest patterns. One is from the folks who are developing uh, these new applications that are utilizing unstructured data. Uh, there's a lot of, of interest we're getting right now from IT folks that are just getting started with object storage to do, uh, to do secondary workflows, to do backups, to do archives. And you know, it's, it's been interesting that we've been getting a lot of interest in our, in our service as a, a new way to approach you know, some of these data protection workflows. All right, so Steve, last question I've got for you. Came out of stealth, uh, to, you know, to Q4 last year. Um, what do we look for in 2017 from Igneous? Yeah, so I think that uh, you'll see it on, on both of those fronts. I think that wh one thing that's going to be seen uh, in 2017 is a lot more uh, 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 development on our side around building up uh, the, uh, a tool chain for folks to use uh, for a data protection tier. And so, you know, we've got a, a new offering uh, uh, coming online, uh, we're calling it Igneous Insights, which provides uh, information about your, uh, what's currently on your primary storage tiers. Uh, we've got a whole set of replication services, you know, they're coming up to do backup, archive, uh, things like replication to the cloud. Uh, but what we're also uh, really moving forward with is a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of what's needed in the tool chain to really support hybrid and multi-clouds. So, you know, how you facilitate uh, the data movement in and out of the cloud, as well as how, how you do the, the auditing and management of the data, you know, no matter where it lives. 
All right, well, Steve Powell, really appreciate you catching up. And if you want to find out more about this category, check out cube365.net slash true private cloud. That's C-U-B-E number 365.net slash true private cloud, which has resources from the whole industry, including from Igneous, including from Wikibon and theCUBE, as to what's happening kind of this true private cloud, hybrid cloud environment. We'll be back with lots more coverage here. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Since the dawn of the cloud, the Cube has been there.